All right, Ben Bang, today is Tuesday. It's March 21st. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. I'm here with Chief. Chief, how are you today? I'm good. I'm uh, close to being well-rested as I've been in a long time. Feeling ready to go. This really? Is you don't got like a March Madness hangover? No, nah, I, I spent all Sunday just watching from the couch. Made a big target run, and then that's all I did all Sunday was gotcha. just sit there and watch. Gotcha. Your, how, how's your bank account doing? Uh, big casino trip with the boys. It's been better. Yeah. It's been better. <laughs> I bet. It's been better, but we're okay. Yeah. I was responsible, mm-hmm. but it's been better. Yeah. Okay. You know? It's just one of those weekends. Exactly. Well, and that's what I always say. Like, I don't really, I don't have, like, hobbies. I don't really have a lot of vices. It's not like I'm going out drinking every weekend. What I like to do is gamble. So if I lose it, then that's the that's the just the cost of doing business. So yeah, like a lot of people don't understand the fundamental concept of a casino, which I understand you're putting your money out there mm-hmm. for someone else to take potentially. Yeah, but to me, it's like hey, it's just just fun, just like buying a ticket to a Taylor Swift concert. I, it, it, I enjoy, totally, yes, yeah, so totally. I enjoy. Yeah, it's entertainment for me, mm-hmm. but it's also, and that's what it should be. It's entertainment. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not only, an investment strategy. No, <laughs> but it's also an inherent risk, and I know that. Yeah. Um, the Taylor Swift's never going to give you your money back. No. You at least have a chance at a casino. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but today we're not talking about March Madness or Mm-mm. gambling or Taylor Swift. Today we're talking about lost continents. Yeah, this is this is like we're leaning heavy into the stuff that I love the most, uh, and, and this is this is right up there because I'm I'm still like I think about it all the time. How the fuck did we get here? Who's building all this ancient shit? And uh, and I just refuse to believe that we just started being people as we know it like 6,000 years ago. I feel like it has to be old. People have been around for 400,000 years at least. And we don't really know much beyond the last five, 6,000 years. The old Tesla episode, I feel, just has opened up a part of your brain that was always there, but it's just... Yeah, that highway traffic, it's 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 flowing clear. right? Yeah. Now. And I, I've always I've always said, like, I'm a big ancient aliens guy, like they do the Friday marathons. And I find it very entertaining while I don't believe any of it. Mm-hmm. OK, because I really don't. I really believe that humans built all this shit. Um, but it's like we lost it through like we've talked about the lost library of Alexandria. There's just all sorts of different uh different episodes in human history that through different cataclysms or disease or war like I, I was reading about something recently where it's like there was some massive cataclysm like a hundred thousand years ago where they think that it wiped out all life on planet all human life on planet earth the, the population numbers were down to like a few thousand a few thousand people like in the entire world is what they think. So it's like, of course, things will just be destroyed, rebuilt, destroyed again over and over. And we're just in like the latest um, version of that. That's why they, that's why the Georgia Guidestones exist. So people. Not anymore. They got, they got smashed. Yeah. But they they got to be rebuilt by now. I don't know if they have been because no one, who, who's funding that one? Oh, there's there's enough. Uh, well, they better track who's funding that because maybe he built it the first time. No one knows. Maybe. There's no enough wackos out there yeah. that people are like, we need this. Yeah, etch it in stone. We need this. They got better put it in like, a different place. Although the Georgia Council has kind of creeped me out too. Yeah, I mean, it's if you don't know what that is, mm-hmm. it's basically uh, a monument in Georgia uh, yep. that exists with uh, – Directions on how to restart restart civilization. Yeah, and it's, it's written in like I think like the eight or twelve most uh, used languages in the world. So it's like English, Spanish, French, Swahili, Russian, you know, Mandarin, all these different things. And they have like sort of like a Ten Commandments, and then also have a uh, but like. Then they have like, don't let the population of the earth get above like 500 million. It's like, well, you know, we got to get rid of like 90% of the people on earth right now. So, yeah. uh, so it's a little genocidal in nature, which yeah, is a yeah, little yeah. off putting, but it is like, it is, it's one of those weird, like creepy mysteries that someone just felt compelled, compelled to build. And, uh, we've done an episode on it too. Yeah. yeah. So if you're, if you're super long curious, time ago, yeah, yeah, I'll look it up, but we can, we can hop into, mm-hmm. uh, we can hop into today's topic. 
Yeah, so this is a, a lost continents thing, and we've talked about Atlantis before, but you know, this is not. We're not going to talk about Atlantis, really. What we did that in October of 2019. Yeah, a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. It's on YouTube though, so go check that out okay. if you want to know about it. Um, and this one was actually this topic was inspired by friend of the program, longtime listener, uh, Cherizi from the 108 guys. So great guy, great guy. Go vote in the 108 tournament. Yep. So he's still in. I I actually gassed it up so uh my sock summer would lose <laughs> i like, don't like that i love but my he sock asked, summer it's a great man i like him too but it's funny to me that he needed he was like hey can you give me a retweet i'm like isn't it your tournament <laughs> shouldn't you be a favorite <laughs> i can't endorse dude people i, I always feel bad because i'll look and i'll see the other person they're facing yeah follows me i was like ah just i don't know that seems like a good guy too but um i don't know Go vote in the 108 tournament. Go vote, yeah. yeah. It's one of the, I, I like the 108 tournament. Right. And it's a bunch of people I don't know anything about, but then <laughs> yeah. I like to kind of swing it when I can. So, it. And I like those guys too, the, the 108 guys, obviously. Mm -hmm. So he sent me this article. It was in Popular Mechanics, and the title of uh, the article was called Scientists Are Close to Finding an Underwater, a Hidden Underwater Civilization. And it's in this region called uh, the Doggerland. Okay, so... The Doggerland, um, I mean, this is a, it's where the North Sea currently is. So if you hear about the North Sea, the, the most that's been in the news recently, I want to say, is probably because of uh, some mysterious mishap about the Nord Stream pipeline, which just accidentally blew up and no one knows how it happened. Okay, but that's kind of where Doggerland was. It, it's this region that's stretched uh, from England up to like Norway and Sweden down and it like made contact with like Denmark, Belgium, Netherlands, France, Germany, like that whole region. So it was like basically this giant landmass that was probably the size they think of around uh, like a little bit bigger than than uh, England and Scotland, like that that British Isle. And uh, and also like there was land that connected uh, those sea levels were so much lower than that Ireland was actually connected to England in one big piece as well. So that was that was Doggerland, and they found they found all sorts of shit down there already. So they found skeletal remains of lions, rhinoceroses, and woolly mammoths, just like on the sea floor. So like lobstermen and fishermen are like trolling, and they'll bring up their nets and their traps and be like, "Here is this like pretty well preserved woolly mammoth." skull with like the tusks and everything they just pull it out of the ocean like what the fuck there's a woolly mammoth up you know here and it's because this was like a very very fertile area of land that um if you think of like the major rivers in europe today the thames you know which flows through london the Rhine, which is the big river in Germany. If you've watched any World War II documentary ever, like you got to get all across the Rhine, then you can, you know, end the war. So the Rhine's the biggest one in Germany. And then the Seine, which runs into Paris. So they can, through like these little beds and these, like the geography or geography, topography on the ocean floor, uh, they basically concluded that all of those rivers actually used to be one river. So one massive river through this area that kind of shaped how Europe is today, but it used to like flow into where the English Channel currently is. But it was all one big river system and it was this lowland area of Europe and they think that um, it, it had like, it was the most fertile part of Europe and it had the densest population. And the reason that they think that is because once Doggerland uh, was submerged, the areas around it, which was caused by people fleeing that area. So Belgium, France, like the, those coastal areas had way more people uh, living in those areas than the rest of the continent. And the, they were like, well, it's probably because they had, you know, similar numbers of population as the rest of Europe, but then they all had to get out of Dodge, some think relatively quickly, and they settled in those neighboring areas and that was like what's spawned that population in Europe. Do you know how they determine population density uh in ancient history? So like we've talked about uh uh was it Cahokia, the place down in, in Illinois? Yeah, so the, the, the mounds. Yeah. 
And they're like, well, yeah, they, we think that the city had like 30,000 people living there. It's like, how the fuck can you theorize how many people were living in an area 25,000 years or however long ago it was? They do it by taking soil samples from like, they, you know, they can tell how long ago it was by how deep it was and how much like human excrement. So they can, they basically count the shit cells Stop. in an area. It's like, holy shit, this is, this is a lot of shit. And then they extrapolate there's some formula to extrapolate that out that they can tell by the soil and how much shit is in it, how many people were living in that area. That's fucking nuts. It's fucking nuts. A nice that little is, fact, right? That is nuts. Dude. Yeah. So that's how they, that's how they do that in ancient history. And that's how they did it. Um, with this area to so know that they had like a, a very heavy population in what is now Do or what used to be Doggerland. What are we doing the census for anymore? Just wait 30,000 years and count the shit. Yeah. Well, you can figure you can count the shit now. The poop. I Can I have a dumb brain moment? Yeah. Where does all that shit go? If you got 6 million or however many people are living in Cook County, 8 million. How many people live in Cook County? 2 million? Dude, where does anything go? Where does all the trash go? Where does... Dude, it blows yes, my mind. it's crazy. And it's like, I know how much shit and, and trash I produce. Yeah. Which feels like a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> so if, right. I'm, if I'm shitting at least once a day and flushing that toilet maybe four times a day, then you should be extrapolate that out to 2 million. And it's like, it's got to go somewhere. I thought... I. I was thinking maybe we got to get Connor and Steve for you. I thought you were having. I need I need them for my shower. Oh, okay. The shower the shower has been a problem. So I would actually I would genuinely love their phone number because <laughs> so I had a guy in here, in there and he quoted me six grand. And I'm like, for for a clog drain, fuck out of here. And I'm like, I'll give you your forty bucks for coming out, but I'm not paying you six thousand dollars. <laughs> so then I just like took a plunger to it, and that helped a lot. So credit to me and and uh Should advocating for myself as my mom would say <laughs> <laughs> so uh but yeah so anyways this dogger land so it's like why did this sink and it's like this is um one of those things that people always talk about with today with climate change right where it's like oh you know if miami's gonna be underwater new orleans is gonna be underwater you know venice is sinking and this would be an example of that as well so and we've talked about the end of the pleistocene era where they had uh, rapid glacial melt and it causes the sea level to rise. So if you have this lowland area where all these rivers are flowing through and, and going out into the sea in these other parts of Europe, well, when the, when the oceans rise, that part got submerged um, fairly quickly. So it was steadily sinking like you would maybe theorize that's what's going on now. And then when you have this... Um, you know, rapid glacial meltage around 12,600 years ago, you had a ton come in and then you actually had like an island still in the middle of the North Sea that was pretty fucking big. And they, you know, that's the island of Doggerland and that's where you could still, they're still finding all these artifacts. And the article that I reference off the top in this popular mechanics is that archeologists and other, and other um, types of scientists are really pushing to do a ton of research there now because there's always been oil there they've been doing um you know deep sea drilling but now they're putting up you know like wind farms and all these other sorts of things where it's like we're gonna fuck up all these things and and marine archaeology is inherently very difficult because it's at the bottom of the fucking ocean it's not like you, you can just dig you have to go down and then dig and look you know and it's all been covered by water destroyed by water for forever and so you had this the last thing there, so you had like this, this island, okay, that was basically mostly submerged, and this, most of the dog land was submerged. And the other part of this with, um, and this is like a real thing, it's called, uh, and I never hear it talked about in like the climate change, uh, sea level rise thing, but it's called, I, I wrote it down, iso, isostatic rebounding, okay? So when you have these glaciers that are sitting on fucking Canada or Antarctica or these different land masses, it, and the, the ice can be like a mile thick at times. So it's like very, very fucking heavy to the point that it pushes that area of the continental shelf down. Okay. But if it's a continental shelf, you think of it like a seesaw. So if you have this part is being pushed down over here by glacier, when that glacier melts and it pushes up this other side, 
when that glacier melts, it's going to like normalize. So the, what you're going to have is you're going to have the melting and the sea level rise, but then you're also just going to have the shelf bang, go like that because it's this side has been suppressed so long by this heavy, heavy ice sheet. And then it's like, well, now this thing that used to be above ground is now under because it just normalized because the glacial meltage. And then they also think that there was this uh, a massive tsunami like six or 7,000 years ago where they had, because of this isota uh, isostatic, isostatic rebounding, it caused like all this continental shelf to like submerge, like a, like a landslide underneath the water caused a huge tsunami. And there is like some geological evidence for that where they can find soil from this part of Norway where it occurred all over the North Atlantic in Iceland, Newfoundland, uh, Scotland, all these different places where it's like, why is that piece of Norway in fucking Canada? Well, they had this giant underground um, landslide, which caused the tsunami and that wiped out the rest of Doggerland. Hmm. And so that was like this lost continent. And it's like interesting where it's like, you know, we always talk about like these, like these ancient wonders of the world, like, like Stonehenge, right? Nobody knows how old that thing is because you can't really carbon date stone. The, the best guess is like it's 6,000 years old. But nobody really knows who built it. They know it's like a temple. It's lined up with like the, uh, the seasons, you know, the different uh, equinoxes and things like that. But it's like nobody knows like much about the civilization that built it. The English and the Romans and everybody who came be before or since rather, they just like found it. And they're like, what the, you know fuck built this the same thing like the pyramids they took those stones from you know miles and miles and miles away and that particular type of stone to built this monument in that spot and and they're like well maybe if maybe the like the headquarters so to speak of the people who are building stonehenge and, and other temples like it in the area well it would make sense that the the population center would be like the which was doggerland would be the center and that they could find a lot of clues as to like how the stones were built and why and what those civilizations were all about if they go down and dig down in them, if they go and look for this stuff. So it, it is interesting and it got me thinking about all these other kind of lost continents. Look up uh, quickly the Bimini, Bimini Road. Okay, this is in the Caribbean. Have you heard of this before? No. Okay, so the Bimini Mode Road, Bimini Mode. Um, oh, it's like a road underwater, huh? Yeah. Now this is this. If you watch that Graham Hancock, um, don't we have the opportunity to talk to him? Yeah. So we, his publicist reached out and they uh -huh. sent me his book. Uh, I think that was like late summer last year, early fall last year. Yeah. And I would love to talk to that guy. And we were waiting to see if he was going to do a book tour so we could do it in person. Mm -hmm. But his book tour didn't come through Chicago. Oh, shit. So if we wanted to do it, we probably could, but we'd mm -hmm. have to do it uh, through Zoom. Got gotcha, you. Okay. So, but I'd love to do that. I'd love to talk to Graham, Graham Hancock. And, but he, this is the one, the Bimini Road. Okay. Like, this is in the Bahamas. And it, I can't decide if I think this is man made or not. What do you, th when you look at that, this stone kind of causeway here. Does that look like it's man-made to you? I mean, I'm, I can't make picture, up my mind. It's kind of hard. One picture, you look at it, and you're like, all right, I could see it. Then you look at a different yeah. one, and it's not. I don't know. The one I'm looking at right now it looks pretty man-made. Yeah. Because it's pretty straight. Pretty straight, and it looks like they're placed there deliberately. But then there are, like, those stones. I think they're in Ireland, which are... They're not exactly like that, but they're kind of shaped like that, which are right along the coast. And those are effective. I think they're kind of like coral, like they're, they're, they're different. But if this is like one of those theor theorized places, that's like Atlantis, he does a really good, this is the one where I've never quite believed that it was, uh, like an advanced civilization, but then you see like these other, other like statues and stuff. And it's like. It, when you think if you, if you believe in this sea level rise historically even you know in the last 12,000 years all, ev almost every major um, population center and every major city has been coastal or, or along a river 
mm-hmm. you know, all throughout the world. And you would think that that would be true going back forever. So it, so if you have the majority of the populations living around along the coast where the food is, well, then wouldn't you expect massive sea level rise to basically just wipe out all the evidence of that? And we know like through these different things, like these lost continents, like there's another one called uh, Zealandia. Zealandia is like a, it's another continental shelf that I want to say like scientists just like started talking about it like 10 years ago. Uh, in, in like a real way, but it used to be part of Australia and Antarctica when they split apart, then it was like the only parts that remained above water because water started rushing in was the New Zealand was what we know as New Zealand, which if you look at the topography of New Zealand, it's all like these crazy mountains, the crazy mountains and lakes and gorges and things like that, because the rest of the continental shelf is just underneath the water. So that was the only parts sticking up high enough to, to remain. And then this is where we're going to get a little weird. Okay. Ooh. So this is one I've been, I've been, I have, I've had it in my TikTok drafts for a while. Okay. <laughs> but I just haven't, I haven't made it yet, but look up, uh, the lost continent of Moo, M U lost continent of Moo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's this giant continent in the Pacific Ocean. And it goes from like Micronesia, uh, like Guam area in the, I guess that would be the West, okay? Stretches all the way north to Hawaii, and then as far east as like Easter Island. Do you know, like this is like one of those things where I'm- This is a big boy. No, it's fucking big. Yeah. It's fucking big. Okay, so this would be like, It'd be like the size almost of like North America, but just like different shape and place in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And there's a th- theory that, and then you've seen like the heads of Easter Island, you know, those, those Easter Island heads, you know what I'm talking about? Easter. Look that up too. I'm sure you've seen it before. Like it, it'll jog your memory. Maybe you just didn't know what they're called. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, of so, course. Okay. So they always show those heads. Those things have full bodies that are just buried into the ground. Really? Yeah, which I, when it was one of those things where it's like when I learned it, I was like, what? Like I've, I've known about nuts. those Easter Island heads, I don't know, since middle school maybe. I didn't know that they were buried up to their necks until like, like I don't know, six months ago. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And there's all these kind of, no one really knows exactly what happened, but they think they just they got so obsessed with building these um, these statues, these heads, which are similar to heads that you'll and structures you'll find kind of all over the world, but they got so obsessed with them and they were this island. They chopped down all the trees and blah blah blah, and then they basically killed themselves because they had no way to leave the island and they had used up every resource on the island to carve these giant heads. And they think that it was just like, oh, well, now we built all these heads, but there's no more trees. And because there's no more trees, there's no more wildlife. We can't farm anything. Like, everything's fucked. And they think that there's people just either left or starved to death. And then people discover those those heads, you know, thousands of years later. But then this theory, okay, is this guy, James Churchwood. And there's, an, there's another guy, too. But James Churchwood was a uh, colonel in the, uh, in the British military or British Navy. And when he was in, he was stationed in India and he met this, you know, the high priest of India and he showed him like these tablets and they had him translate and they talked about this lost continent of Mu and they said the kind of where it was and all these different things. And that was, and they referenced this ancient civilization called the Nikals. And there was some wild uh, volcanic activity that sank the island of Mu. It sounds similar to like the Atlantis uh, myth, but then he's the the theory is that the Nikal left uh, the island of Mu, and they became the Mayans. So they were like this, you know, seafaring uh, people who you know, I don't know, unlock the secrets of the universe type of people, like this advanced ancient advanced civilization, at least advanced for for their age. And when they when they had this cataclysm, they had to escape their the sinking island, the sinking continent, 
and they took off and they settled in Mexico and, and Central America and restarted their civilization. And that's when like the Mayans came to be. So like the Nicole, like the ancient, cause it was like another, that's like the Mayans, like we could, I don't even know if we've ever done one about the Mayans, but the Mayans, how the fuck do they know all that stuff? Like they, they had their calendar that was so dialed in that they could predict like every single like sonar, solar and lunar eclipse. Like they knew like they had their uh, calendar would go back like 26,000 years and they could map it through like the, the stars. They built these incredible pyramids, uh, you know, similar to the ones in Egypt. And it's like, how, how did these people just spring up out of nowhere, out of the jungle and start bang, making all these uh, temples, the Mayan calendar, all these artifacts have this thriving population. And then they disappeared like that too. It was like a very odd and it was probably disease carried by the Europeans, but maybe not. And, uh, or war, so who knows, but it was like, they just, they arrived seemingly out of nowhere and then they vanished, but they had these insane, insane building capabilities, mathematic capabilities and astrological capabilities. And it was just like, how do you, how long would it take to discover something like that? Cause like, think of how meticulously you have to watch the sky to see all these yeah. constellations and, and for how long it would take you generations and generations and generations to, to chart it every single night. Cause what if it's cloudy one day? Well, you can, you're not doing any work that night. Now, do you think they were smarter than us as a whole or were there just like a couple smart people? Like now, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that that's probably a universal truth where it's like the upper point oh one percent are the ones that move the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, they say that you know the the humans that existed, um, you know, four hundred thousand years ago are like the earliest, the oldest human bones. But then there's there's they find evidence of humans like fire pits and things like that 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 goes back like a million years. So they say that the, at least the ones 400,000 years ago had basically the same level of intelligence, like raw intelligence as us, same, same brain mass size, all that kind of stuff was exactly the same. Uh, but they just, they didn't have, you know, the types of tools and they didn't have like the ability to, um, easily trans like, really like the Gutenberg press really made the whole world literate. And, you know, they talk about we're living in the information age now, but really the information age, I don't, and maybe this is how they categorize. I don't know, but you could say that it really started with the printing press mm -hmm. because then you could disseminate the written word all over the place and you can communicate with people. You used to just have to be like, Hey, like, here's what I'm doing. And you just address like the crowd. And this is what I think. And the person addressing the crowd might be literate or not, or is just like a leader. Once you're able to disseminate all that information, that's why like, you always talk about like, we, we always talk about the library of Alexandria where you just lost like all this information. Yeah, so it's crazy. Shit. And there was definitely like seafaring people way back when, because we know uh, there's that Perry Reese map. And the Perry Reese map was written, you know, pre Columbus and I think, or right around then at least, but he was like this, you know, a Tur I think he was Turkish and he was this sailor and he had like the coast of South America and all the way down to Antarctica on a map. And then his notes say taken from older source material. So it's like they had source material that knew Antarctica was down there like three, 400 years before anyone had discovered Antarctica. So how the fuck is that possible? So they must have had people charting the, charting the earth. And it was like that. And then that, like that whole idea that the earth was flat. Right. And that was like Columbus and Magellan and people like they circum that. And it's like, Oh, it's actually not flat. It's round. But it's like the Mayans knew it was round because they were able to chart it in the sky. And they knew then the Mayans knew, um, that the earth revolved around the sun because they were charting it. So it's like, how the fuck did they, how could you know that just through basically math? Yeah. They could, because they didn't have, well, I don't think they didn't have space travel or any, any other type of travel besides like boats and shit. So it's like, how, how, how do you, 
figure something like that out as this guy 12, 15,000 years ago. It's crazy. It's it crazy is. to think about. It is. So it, it blows me. And then, like, I, it's one of those things I can't stop talking about it or thinking about it. I'll just be <laughs> sitting at home, sitting in the shower, be like, how the fuck did they do that? What the fuck? What the fuck? And it's like, I can't even get home without Google Maps. But these guys would be like, no, like, that star over there is not going to reappear for another 700 years. Like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> so it, it just, it blows my mind. Like, there's so much that we figured out and lost and then are rediscovering. And there's got to be so much that we still don't know. And maybe there's a ton of information that's just been lost to the sea as, you know, the, you know, these cataclysms and sea level rise and these, you know, cities and communities that were along these coastal areas because, of, co of course, they were. Just got whoosh, washed away and to never really be found. Mm -hmm. And because how, how could you? And uh, so it's, it's, it fascinates me. And it's like the, and the geology of it always does too, where it's like I know that there's like, I think it's like several hundred miles off the coast of Georgia. There's like a preserved forest just underwater. Like you can just tell that this was like a forest back when the, the land stretched out that far, so 12,000 years. So it's like, I, what? It's fucking crazy. That so is nuts. it is, it is one of those mysteries that it's like, I love people like Graham Hancock and, um, you know, there's this other guy, he's an Asian guy. He had a show on discovery channel where he, he kind of does the same thing where he lost ancient cities and because it just feels like there's something that if we discover it, it could improve our lives today. Mm -hmm. Where if we figure out how to do this shit, like, like the pyramids where it's like wireless free electricity. Somebody better figure that out. Somebody sent me a DM that there is a company in Texas actually working on that. Oh, really? Yeah. So we'll have to see if he gets killed. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Like, yeah, put those guys in a bubble. Yeah. So he DM is like Vivizi or something like that. Something weird name like that. Often I haven't looked into it yet, but because uh, we should get them on the podcast. Yeah, we should. Yeah. I mean, listen, comment. You know, some comment guy. He's he's coming in with a. With the Tanya Harding fucking club. Yeah, and for real. Or worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for Stop sure. Stop talking about this fucking shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, then, Chief. That's it. That's it for today. That's it. The yep. lost continents of uh, fucking. We got some moo. The, the Bimini Road. Bimini Road. Bimini Road. Doggerland. Doggerland. A lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. That's it for today. We will see you all tomorrow.